Okay, so a quick roundup of January's updates and announcements. Let's get straight into it. So firmware updates. So what we've noticed is on the H3, the K, the H1 Gen 2 inverters, the new grid pressure or meter compensation setting as it's known. So if you've got a, a H3, a K or a H1 Gen 2, you can have your firmware updated. And as per a video I released last week where I show the setting off, you're able to, instead of drawing 20 to 40 watts continuously when in self-use mode, you're able to actually reverse that so you can set, say, uh, negative 40, and it will always push back to the grid a small amount of wattage. And that's, for the UK market, that makes a lot of sense where we have um, peak and off-peak tariffs, so you can set it so that even during the daytime when you're in peak rate, you're actually not consuming that small amount of power. In reality, it's only going to save a few pounds a year, but it's nice that the inverter can have it has been updated to have that setting so it can continue to push back. We're watching this space whether Fox also introduced this setting on the Classic or the Generation 1 H1. Uh, the H1 did have an update released today, and that enables reverse CT detection and with a bypass mode as well. So I'm still testing out exactly how this works, but the guess is that if the CT was removed and accidentally um, replaced back onto the cable in your meter area backwards, that there'd be some kind of alert to either the end user or the installer or both, and that the installer actually has an option where they can... Uh, effectively bypass it which allows the Fox system to reverse the CT connection fixing the problem remotely it's obviously going to be a lot a lot easier to be for it to be detected and then tell the end user to unclip the CT clamp in their meter area turn it around and then re-click it but um, imagine they're away and they've noticed the problem and suddenly their usage is all over the place as an installer we're going to be able to click a button and sort of resolve that issue uh, temporarily. So that's pretty neat to see. It's also neat to see that Fox are able to have this uh, more meter and CT control by just having an over-the-air firmware update. That's that's pretty neat. I'm surprised that we didn't also see the grid compensation setting point one also come in this latest update for the 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 Gen One H series. But maybe that's still in the works. Was we'll watch this space. I've noticed the micro inverters that have yet to really hit the UK market have seen that there's a number of firmware updates that have become available on the installer portal. And from that, all I can really take is that um, they're getting that feedback, that data, and that they're hardening out the software for the product. And hopefully we see the micro inverters in the very near future. H3 Pro now supports scheduler mode. This has been uh, something that has been on the wish list for a long time for many H3 Pro owners. So that's with the scheduler mode, you're allowed to have multiple charged and discharge uh, slots using the scheduler system. And if you've got a H3 Pro, you could potentially have two battery stacks connected to one inverter with over 80 kilowatt hours of storage. You might want to be using scheduler to push back power when it's at a, at a peak rate uh, to, to make a bit of revenue. But yeah, having that scheduler mode now ubiquitous across all of the inverter models, that's really great. The Generation 2 and the K series also had battery heater support added uh, into the firmware. I I've, I've, I've saw that and there is uh, an open ideas discussion going on on the GitHub uh, to add the Modbus support for it. So that would be nice for users that have got a Modbus integration using Home Assistant. Hopefully in the not too distant future, you'll be able to control your battery heater with all the power of Home Assistant and what that brings in terms of automation. At the moment, I'll show in a later slide that there's a user interface uh, and a settings page in the Fox app. PowerQ, which is the new replacement for the all-in-one system, it uh, uses the cube batteries with an all-in-one inverter stacked on top of it. Uh, that's finally hit sort of the production version one firmware as production launch nears. Good to see the power queue is coming down the line. I know a lot of people really appreciated the 
ease of installation and how good an all-in-one system is uh, that you can but install both indoors and outdoors. So that's nice to see. Uh, battery models have now been updated uh, with the new, so all battery models, as far as I'm aware now, support the new battery algorithm. I covered that in a, a separate video a few weeks ago. I'll cover it again on a slide very quickly today, but effectively they've tuned the battery algorithm around the temperature and the state of charge uh, to provide uh, the best uh, experience for uh, or sorry the best life uh, span for the battery uh, sometimes at the compromise of the experience when the battery can't reach a full charge overnight during a cheap window for example but we'll um we'll get into that in a moment uh, battery heating fixes so on the initial release of batteries that supported heating or warming the interface was a bit clunky there was um, things like Fahrenheit and Celsius being used on the same slider. Uh, we had users reporting that it wasn't working properly. But as of today, I've seen users uh, with it correctly configured and working. And some of the UI glitches all fixed up in the latest uh, app update. So going back to that charge algorithm that I was speaking about, on the, the top section is the old algorithm and some data that I was provided by Fox plus some data that I figured out myself and I'm kind of plotting this in a spreadsheet so that I can validate what Fox is saying in terms of the charge rate for a given state of charge and temperature. That's the old algorithm. The new algorithm that you see at the bottom, slightly more condensed in view, the, the, it, it's effectively the same because you can see the range is just wider um, on the axis. What Fox are doing is to, the biggest change is to reduce the charge rate as the battery nears full. This is very common and you see it a lot with EVs, whereas the battery starts to get over 80%, 90%, the charge rate slows down. It's normal for batteries and uh, before um, it would only really cut in at above 90%, whereas now they're dropping that down. So at colder temperatures, um, and that's colder being sub 20 Celsius. You can see they're dropping the charge uh, current uh, far sooner by far. I'm still unpicking a few of the charge current versus temperature versus state of charge. I'm not entirely convinced that the latest firmware is perfectly matching this, doc this um, chart, which I produced from the documentation from Fox. So there's still a few gremlins, I'm sure, to smooth things out, but... The simplest way of looking at charging algorithm is the colder your battery, the slower it will charge. And if it's a cold battery that's also nearing full, so a high state of charge, it will also slow down. Doing this isn't just to um, to uh, cause problems. They are slowing the charge rate down based on the data they have to ensure the battery's performance and lifespan. And what we see from... What we see when we compare LFPs in cars, we're seeing very similar sort of charge curves now in Fox. I actually think that over the last couple of years, Fox uh, and their charge rate algorithm has been too. I think it's been um, it's been too generous with the number of charging amps that you're able to charge in cold conditions at high state of charge. I think what they're actually doing is starting to standardise it and bring it down into a slightly more conservative and reasonable level. The only disadvantage, obviously, is that your charging takes longer when the battery is colder. There's multiple discussions going on about how best to uh, how to combat a cold battery through installation or uh, the physical location, moving the battery, installing the battery, or just accepting that when it's cold for a few weeks a year that you'll see uh, a slower charge curve. When it's really cold, you'll see the battery effectively go into suspense and it won't charge or discharge and that's caught a few people out and generated a number of threads on the forum and the facebook group it is a design characteristic of the battery and it's similar in with other manufacturers as well so battery chemistry and their uh, pros and cons is not a unique thing to fox but it is something that is very visible in the app when it's not when it's not able to charge as fast or discharge for your house loads let me know if you want a separate video all about the algorithm of the charge rates and what I've figured, uh, how I've been 
uh, figuring this out and what I've found across the uh, sites that I manage. But yeah, just wanted to give another opportunity for folks to pause the screen, have a look at the new charge algorithm at this bottom section. Okay, so battery heater mode, uh, credit to, to Ben and Johnny for their contributions to the Facebook group with the pictures. For models that are that have a heater built into them, they will either end with a dash H on the serial number or they'll have a sticker marked warm on the side of it. You can see that in this picture that was uploaded. And you can see that Johnny's uploaded a uh, screenshot of what the battery heating configuration looks like. So you can set a start heating temperature and an end temperature, a little bit like a thermostat. And you can also set times when you want to consume grid power to charge those batteries. Uh, I'm interested to get my hands on a battery that has a heater built into it. I want to do some technical analysis and see if we can uh, figure out if using power to heat the battery actually is beneficial when it comes to an efficiency standpoint. For some installations, it's an absolute necessity. If you've got your battery mounted externally without any insulation, you may find the battery is um, is not able to charge or discharge when it gets really, really cold down to those low single figures. So having a battery warmer to keep the system working would be great. This is becoming the standard now, and, and Craig has communicated on one of the earlier Q and A's about how the whole range is effectively going heater enabled, and that's partly in response to the regulation changes or the impending regulation changes, as I say, currently just a recommendation that batteries are being restricted and where they can be installed. So you're going to see more installations taking place in outbuildings, garages and outside where they're going to be exposed to colder temperatures and having a feature like a battery heater mode for those few very cold weeks we have in the UK, great. Rumba Fox are also an international company, so they're going to be sell selling batteries in climates that are far cooler and far hotter than what we see in the UK. But I thought I'd clarify what to look for when you're talking to your installer about your batteries and their location and uh, to press on the fact that if it is a an unheated space or outdoors to uh, to request the heater model because it does seem to be beneficial as a feature, whether or not you use it, um, that's that's here or there, but um, I'm interested to see how efficient a battery heater is uh, as we have a few cold weeks a year. So the Power Q, this is their all-in-one replacement. So Fox used to sell an all-in-one big metal square cabinet with HV2600 batteries in and an integrated inverter. Very popular product. I really liked the look of it. thought it was a bit of a Tesla Powerwall competitor. This was long before we had the EP batteries. So to have the Fox Cube or the Power Q um, as what they're marketing as an energy storage system. So when you look on their website under inverters, it's not appearing under batteries, it's appearing under inverters and it's not appearing under single or three phase. It has its own section they're calling out for energy storage systems. So this is a an all in one unit. It's an inverter and battery management system as you can see in this, this top layer of the sandwich, and that clips on top of um, the the ECS, the Q batteries that we uh, that we know and love, very popular. I'll talk about it in a second, but a lot of those ECS batteries are being rebranded now to EQ batteries. You can see the picture on the right, how in their the mo their uh, design, their mock up, you can see that it is a layered Q battery with a much uh, thicker uh, module on the top and that's where the inverter is housed uh, we've learned from conversations with Fox and Craig previously that the power cube, power cube is going to be available for parallel function as well so you can combine multiple you can find multiple uh, power cubes together to get that parallel uh, storage capacity and throughput a couple of things to point out as well that I noticed on the data sheet that's now available in for on the UK website that it's got temperature control in the form of a battery heater. Great. We've just covered that. But also that it's got a fire suppression system as well. I believe these are starting to make their way into the, the EP batteries, the fire suppression packs. I've seen some of them cracked open and 
uh, with some diagrams pointing that that is the suppressant system. But uh, it's good that they're calling it out on their data sheet now and that in the near future, if not already, all Fox batteries will be heater equipped and fire suppressant equipped and full IP rating for outdoor installation. So that's um, that's a really interesting trend there. Now for the EQ battery. Now, the EQ battery is effectively a modified and rebranded version of the traditional ECS battery, the cubes that we've seen over the last few years. But Fox are, seem to be going down the direction of relabeling and adding features such as heating and now fire suppressant to their EQ batteries. One thing I've noticed by sort of reverse engineering some of the Fox um, stuff is that there is firmware capabilities and code to support EQ models, the 3300, the 4300, the 5000, which is a new uh, model range, and also the EQ 7000. There's also reference to something called an EV long life. I'm not sure what that is uh, in the code, whether that's a different type of battery or whether they're getting into providing battery packs for EVs. I have no idea, but it's interesting to see that the EQ battery range is now extending right up to the, or is about to be extended to the EQ 7000 series. Again, this isn't official Fox. This isn't an official Fox announcement. This is what I've been able to glean by just reverse engineering uh, Fox software to see if things match up. And I can see there is reference to these models. So they are highly likely to either exist or are about to be announced. I'm really interested to see where the EQ 5000 and the 7000 land in terms of how many uh, battery units you can add together. Because if you can add eight or nine 7000 series, and assuming that 7000 means um, seven, a seven kilowatt hour battery per slab, that's going to be uh, a significant battery storage size that people will be able to buy in single battery forms. Once the data sheets start to come out, that will hint as towards which uh, size batteries are available. Some of the larger size battery configurations are only available for three phase. So um, let's watch this space. But I thought as soon as I noticed something, I would share it. Not to rumor start, but more out of interest and excitement that if you're planning a battery expansion, that there could be a five and a 7,000 series EQ battery coming very soon. Anyway, I hope you found the this week's update interesting and just clarified some of the recent releases in terms of firmware and hardware and some of the contributions from the uh, forum and the group members in terms of uh, some of the improvements they've noticed. Have a great weekend.